welcome to Look Down There, the show where we talk about things we don't talk about. I'm your host, Michelle Lamore. Today, my guest is a visual artist from Australia who works in watercolor, acrylic, and pen. She is influenced by gender, identity, sexuality, nature, beauty, and the female experience. Her intentions are to empower the viewer and to change their perceptions of what is beautiful. Please welcome my guest, the creator of Yoni Art by Katie Lloyd. It's Katie Lloyd. Hi, how are you? Hi, so happy to have you here. I know we've been trying to get together for a little bit now and I'm so happy this worked through the power of technology. Yeah, yeah, I'm so happy to be here. I'm glad it worked too. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, I started this project back in December and I ran across your artwork on, I don't know if it was Facebook or Instagram or whatever, but I just thought it was so beautiful and I knew that you were someone that I had to connect with. So, how long have you been drawing yonis? Um, Okay, so I started drawing yonis maybe about seven years ago. And, um, of course, I'd started with my own yoni and um, had been exploring and, and uh, working with that for a little while. But, yeah, then I, I did it for – I actually started doing it for um, a trade. There was a workshop I wanted to do, and the facilitator was more than happy for a yoni portrait, and that's how it started. <sighs> I love that. So yeah. you were you were an artist before you started drawing yonis, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I have, I've always been really creative, and um, it's always been a passion. But really, I I don't think I'd seriously settled down into being a visual artist um, until until I was about thirty. So I was a little bit of a late bloomer when it came to really uh, stepping in and stepping up into my art career. And, uh, yeah, but the creativity, you know, it's always been there, but putting in those extra hours and making it making it your passion so it drives you to be creating, that's been for about 10 years now. And so, yeah, full-time artist, artist life, it's, um, it's everything for me now, yeah. as is the Yoni art. It's, um, it's at the forefront of what I'm doing. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. So how does this work exactly? Like, do you sit down with somebody? I mean, maybe not now during a pandemic, but in yeah. the past, in the before times, um, did yeah. you sit down with someone? Was there a live model or do you just do it from photographs? Or how does that work? So uh, when I first started, I was doing live sittings um, and that was that was really exciting and it was invaluable experience to be able to to do that um actually you know my first my first sitting i did was just such an experience and i felt really really blessed because uh, it was an exchange that i was doing for somebody and she was in her um her room like there was cushions and it was all plush and lovely and it was a really nice experience but I was so nervous like I was shaking my blood pressure was rising it was just am I going to be able to do this like can I make this happen and what an intimate experience to be having having a woman laying back and opening herself presenting herself at, for a portrait I was whew, it was hot like I was yeah, it was an amazing experience. And just as I was about to start, um, you know, she, she was back and I had my paper and my pencils, going to do some sketches, and she started bleeding. And I just saw this little trickle come um, for, out from out of her, from out of her yoni. And uh, I said, oh, look, I, I, think, I think you've just started menstruating. I can see here. And she's like, well, I'm totally okay with that if you are. And I was like, yeah, I'm okay with that. This is this is incredible. I've never seen anything like that. And I honestly, I felt like it was a full blessing, a full goddess blessing to be doing this work. And I just, from that moment, I just took it in my stride and I'm like, this is powerful. This is really powerful work. But so, yeah, um, back to the question. I, you just started with these one-on-one -on -one sittings. 
but I was noticing that a lot of the people that were wanting my art were from all over the world and um, having an Etsy store, I had orders coming in from uh, like mostly from the States actually. I'd say 80% of my clients um, are from the States. So uh, I started working from photographs and um, it's, it's just as powerful experience, maybe not having the ritual but um, I think sometimes when the person has an experience where they can sit down, they're slowing down, stepping into their body, maybe doing a massage, a viewing, really seeing themselves, that is also like full power as well. So, yeah, these days I'm doing it more from photos. Um, even when I am doing a sitting with somebody, I take photos to come um, to go back to my studio with anyway and they're, really important for the little fine details I get into and making them so lifelike, so realistic. But, um, yeah, photos, a live sitting, it's all really powerful and it all, it all comes out with the same, the same result really, which is yeah. um, a I, portrait to represent her. I can imagine that it's an extremely healing experience for the person sitting, but also for you. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of trust um, on both parts. I think it's a, there's a huge amount of trust to be seen. Um, but also for me, I, within my work, I like to, I, I like to feel and um, I just like to open up. I like to be open to whatever is right for the person to be able to come through. So there's a meditative process in that. They're stepping into flow. Flow is pivotal, pivotal, pivotal <laughs> in my work. And, um, yeah, there's a real opening and healing. And often when, when I've done a portrait, I... I have a look and I can I can see, you know, I can see her, I can see what's created. And after I'm finished, I'm like, you know, there's a real softness or there's a real power. There's words that will often come to how she presented and where presenting those words to the person or to the woman, if she chooses to receive them, you know, like that's full power there too, just for her having that um, real deep seeing. Mm -hmm. it's that's really powerful and healing for both of us I think yeah, yeah. I mean you keep, you keep saying the word power and there is so much power there and yes it's, it's power that we're often so connected from and so encouraged to put away put mm -hmm. it aside don't actually look at it um, yep. and don't encourage other people to look at it. Maybe don't even touch it. You yeah. Know? So there's so much uncovering of shame that we have to do in order to really access that ancient power, that goddess power that mm -hmm. you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so many people didn't even have the proper names for it. Um, and I, I imagine there are still people that don't know what all the names are of their anatomy and what they can all do. And, you know, I, I was just having a, I was watching something or reading something the other day and the fact that the clitoris wasn't even um, putting medical text until the last, really now, it's now that the clitoris is being um, included and seen for what it is, the fact that it was omitted is just another example of how, um, yeah, how women have been repressed, you know, how, how we've been unable to really see our full power to step into that. If we're, if we're not actually able to see, embody, feel, have, have the names for, have that experience, then how, how are we really able to be project everything that we've got, like to put it all out there, to put all our energy and our, our power out there when something's missing? Yeah. 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 I mean, putting a name to it is mm. really important. There is power in that, in, Absolutely. in recognizing that. And you were talking before we started the interview that, you know, you wanted to do Yoni Art by Katie Lloyd and having your yes. name attached to it is just kind of brings more ownership to that. 
So yeah. if, you can, if you can identify your parts and have the right names for your parts, um, there is so much power and ownership in that. And there, there really is no way to move about the world um, if you're not fully connected to that power mm -hmm. source. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's got to do with your confidence. Yeah, so much. Yes. Mm. Yes. So... You know, when you do your work, it's not just the the picture of the yoni. You're often adding lots of details, flowers, hummingbirds, um, you know, water scenes. So what what inspires you to add those extra details? Is it information from the person who's sitting for you or do you ask them, you know, do you, what things they'd like? Like, how do you find that extra inspiration? Okay, so um, part of my process is to ask the, the sitter what they're looking for because I want to make sure that they receive a portrait that they, they'd like. If they'd want something that's just just their yoni as like the hero in the piece or they'd like to have other adornments around it, that's perfectly fine and I'll do whatever they like. But as to what the other subjects are that sit with the yonis in the portraits, well, it's a bit of a thing of mine. So the flowers, say I, I work with a lot of flowers in my paintings, paintings and, well, simply flowers are a reproductive um, organ of a plant. So I like to include them um, juxtaposed against the yonis because ultimately they're both reproductive systems and somehow... Um, flowers can be cut, people put them on their table, they stop to smell the roses, they really will stop to appreciate and gaze and bring in the full beauty of the of a flower, say a rose or something, into their lives. But the, the whole thing of the yoni being, no, 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 keep that undercover, Dylan. Like we were saying before, don't let anyone touch it, don't let them see it. Like it's that's just really for you. It's just keep it really on the down low. I'm like, hang on a tick here. Like we can appreciate a reproductive organ of a plant but not a person, and it's just bringing some kind of awareness um, around that conversation, I think, there. Um, I include mushrooms as well. Mushrooms are very interesting because they're um, not all of them, but some of them are asexual. So they can change their gender. They can change their sex as to what they need. And I think that's really curious as well. And especially in today's day where gender is so fluid and celebrated. And I think that's fabulous. Um, and the hummingbirds, uh, yeah, the birds are kind of more of a penetrating source, I guess. They're kind of more of an energy that's going to be working with the flower for the reproduction. So it's just bringing in different ideas of gender um, and, uh, and of reproduction. So, yeah, that's kind of where I come to there. But, um, you know, I, I think... I think it's lovely to have the flat, the yonis with something else to adorn them to have that composition, but they they look really beautiful on their own too. So it's it's whatever the viewer or the, the viewer the um the sitter the client would actually like is where I'll go. But I love to explore the different elements too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you always come up with such beautiful um, vulva landscapes and yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the colors are so gorgeous as well beautiful uh, thank you I like to bring an essence of the divine there's often in some of my works they'll have like skyscapes with golds and creams and pinkies and then um, graduating down into deeper colors down the bottom and it, there's the real essence of the divine that I, I feel from that and I like to frame the yoni as as an element of the, the divine like I see the yoni as um, it's well, it's a portal. It's like temple gates, um, a place to be seen and recognised and honoured, um, like a deity, you could say. So that's kind of bringing that. This is sacred. This is really, really special. This is precious, and bringing that kind of element in there. So I really love playing with colour to be able to create that. Yes, 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 yes. We need more of that in this world. Mm -hmm. and, yes, I. I absolutely love that you are bringing in the goddess uh, energy into your painting. And, and I really, I feel like the more 
of us that can access our power, the better our world is going to be. Hell yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like there, there yeah. is so much to fix. There's so many problems to fix, but I feel like if we can win this battle within ourselves, then mm -hmm. we have a greater chance of coming together and winning the battles at large. Yeah, yeah. And empowerment is contagious. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you see someone that's, you know, really in themselves, they're owning their body, they're really empowered, and people around them are like, what's that for? Like, what's going on over there? And yeah. the curiosity peaks and the conversations start, and it's it's really dynamic that way. And I think empowerment is fully, yeah, it is contagious. Yeah. It's like <laughs> I'm catching empowerment today. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what? I wish empowerment was the pandemic that we were all experiencing. Wouldn't that be epic? That would be great. Yeah, well, we know we're trying, Katie. We're trying. Yeah, we're trying. One yoni at a time. Exactly, <laughs> right? But uh, you know, that's true. You know, when you when you turn your own light on, you give others permission to do the same. And that's the that's, that's right. the beautiful contagion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> You know, that is that is wonderful. However, doing this type of work, I would assume that you would come up with against a lot of um, obstacles. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, censorship is huge. Censorship is the biggest obstacle that I come across um, these days. Well, so, for example, being able to get into a gallery, being able to sell on some forums. I, I can't advertise on places like Facebook or Instagram. Um, being able to get the word out there through censorship is, it's, well, yeah, it's hard because of censorship. So that's where I really try and um, rely on the people that support what I'm doing and love my work to share because otherwise it won't really get out there. And I guess prejudice as well, but, um, I mean, I've had people, when I've been selling my art in the street, um, when I first started, I'd set up a little street store, like a little market store, and I've had people, women mostly, come by and tell me that what I'm doing is disgusting, that, you know, oh. it should not be allowed, and I was just like, okay. But then, you know, the husband would come along and go, I think it's great. So, <laughs> yeah, it's there are, there are different, I mean, I've been attacked on social media for sure. Um, but I just, you know, I just see it as an opportunity to educate. And I think that's, you've got to turn those situations around and, um, yeah, take it in your stride as a, take it as an opportunity to educate and say, well, it's really interesting that you're feeling these ways about your body because you own a yoni. So like, have you thought about this or that? And trying to, start to reframe the way that people approach the subject because I, I totally get the whole idea of people's thinking, okay, like it shouldn't really be out there. Like I get why, but I think that with a slight reframing of their thought pattern around that, they might change the way that they think. So I think that's part of what I'm doing is trying to uh, change the constructs that people have around how they feel about their bodies. And I, and I, was, I just think it comes from over sexualization as well. Like, I, yeah, our bodies are so sexualized. Um, if take away that sexual element, then it's just this beautiful portal for life to be brought through. And how can that be a dirty thing that has to be repressed? I mean, life is coming through here. How is that something that we need to be ashamed of? Right. So. Yeah, but still censorship is is probably the biggest thing that I've um, had to deal with. But it's also the reason why I'm creating this work, because we are so censored. So it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to put it out there. And through that becomes, you know, comes more empowerment like we were talking about before. I think um, the more people that get to see the diversity of vulva that there are out there, like they are different. It's not going to be all the same as what you might see in you know, just some kind of uh, paper shop, news agent, porno magazine, which is, you know, pretty soft and you're going to see very much the same cookie cutter kind of vagina in there. Like I love that within my art I get to, sh like, showcase, display all these different types and there's an education around that too. And you don't, uh, you don't normally get to see that kind of thing. So I think that's a positive spin on it.
Yeah, yeah, and you brought up how sexualized it is, and and the thing is, is that the the sexual element oh. is usually for others. Like it's never for. Sorry, I'm gonna. It just broke up. Then, can you just repeat that? What you were starting to say? Yeah. So the I'm saying the the sexual element of it all is usually for the entertainment or the pleasure of others, but yeah. not for the person, the vulva owner themselves. And mm -hmm. so that's where that's the, this disconnect happens because that's right. It's just for them. And yeah. I, you know, I can't take pleasure in how I look because how I look is disgusting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like the sexual ob ob um, objectification when it is for the other, that's when, yeah, the power is taken out of it and you're simply performing, so to speak, for the other. And performance is fine when you're doing it for yourself and you're empowered in and you're like, yeah, look at me. Like, this is amazing. Look what I can do. And, you know, um, that kind of empowerment in the body is, yeah, fabulous. But when it's, yeah, the sexual ob objectification is there purely for the other and within that can come some um you know rep rep kinds of um repression as well like like you were saying the disconnection from the self and just just being there as a servitude for the other for their viewing pleasure only no nah, that's not yeah. okay yeah, yeah, and this this censorship kind of reinforces that idea, the idea that you are you're bad, right? Like yeah. I I have been censored up and down, all over the place. Um, I've been banned on YouTube. Like, I you know if I post something that shows a little, t you know, a little bit too much of my back or on, on Instagram, I'm taken down. And now it's wow. just like my feed is just pictures of my eyeball. Um, cause I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. like I've even had problems on Patreon, um, them saying that I, it looks like I'm enjoying it too much. What? <laughs> yes. Hang on. Isn't that a good thing? <laughs> Isn't that right. something that should be encouraged? Yeah. I mean, I guess I take it as a Don't have so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I, I guess I take it as a compliment, but damn, it's frustrating because it's like, yeah. I don't know what yeah. to do anymore. I don't know how to be. I don't know what to say. I don't know what I'm supposed to look like or what. And then it just... I see other accounts that it's like, well, they're showing it. How come I can't show it? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I've been banned as well from Instagram and the old shadow ban, all that kind of thing. I think um, the larger you get, the more support, like the more following, the more you come up on their radar as well and the, and the more obstacles there, you know. But we're just going to have to beat that censorship before that becomes too much of a problem. We've got to break that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think can. as long as the as long as there are um, businesses with advertising, though, within any, any of these mediums, you know, with the advertising dollar, it's going to be a hard one to yeah, it's going to be a hard one to break the censorship. Right, right, mm. and it's always. I mean, I don't know how it is for you in Australia, but for us here, it's always about protecting the kids. We got to protect. Oh yeah, the kids, right. Yeah. Hence, they have some sex education that's not a banana and a condom. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, having a, a woman who is fully empowered in her sexuality and owning her sexuality, I mean, that's yeah. something good to see. Like, it's, yes. It's because often our sexuality is so manufactured and so fake and so performative, and that's what mm -hmm. you grow up thinking you're supposed to be like. Yeah, absolutely. And my art is all autonomous. Um, autonom oh, what's the word? Anatomically? I can't pronounce that. And it's correct. <laughs> it's all correct. So, like, you know, the clitoris is there and it's the size that it actually is. The hood's there and it's the size that it actually is. Like, if there's um, a different lumps and bumps and curvy bits, they're actually there. Like, that's they're actually there the colors might be a little different a bit of artistic license but that's good like that's educational people need to see that I think and yeah. especially for kids I, I think you know like my art I find it probably easier to 
digest is maybe the wrong word, but it's, it's a, easier to show somebody because it is a bit softer. It does soften the harder edge of a photograph. So maybe they need to look at it a little bit more like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, Katie, I'm so grateful to have you on the show. Yeah. Um, where can people find out more about you and support your work? Uh, so you can find me on um, Instagram and Facebook at Yoni Art by Katie Lloyd. Um, Patreon, again, it's Yoni Art by Katie Lloyd. My uh, website is katieloyd.com.au. And I'm also on Etsy where I have prints and artworks on there too. Beautiful. Yeah. And are thank you, you for having me. Oh, yeah, it's been so much fun. <laughs> um, are you currently accepting commissions? <laughs> I <laughs> I do uh, I do commissions, but at the moment I have a little bit of a waiting list. So I had closed my books, but they'll be open again soon. So I have got a um, I've got a link on my website where you can go and join a mailing list. So as soon as my commissions are open, I'll email you and you can get yourself a spot. So that's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. (laughs) Now a reminder for you to spread your legs and spread the love and support (laughs) Katie Lloyd and like and subscribe and follow and share the show. You can also follow us at I Look Down There and you can follow me at Michelle Amore. And make sure that you tune in for my next show premiering February 13th called Uncensored, Beyond Burlesque. Thank you again for joining us. And a reminder to grab a mirror and look down there.